Lord. Good evening, one more time for the Holy Ghost and praise the Lord. Hallelujah, anybody glad to be in the service one more time? Anybody walking with the Lord today? Anybody grateful that he woke you up this morning and started you on your way, clothed you in your right mind, gave you eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to discern? I, I heard this morning as I woke very early, I heard my mother and the voices of praise, all of whom are now sainted. But I heard them singing, I want to walk and talk with Jesus each and every day. I want my life to be an example for him in every way. Can I get a witness in this Lenten season? Anybody coming out of Lent better than you went in it? And thanking God for the opportunity to walk with him. We want to say good evening and God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as we journey to the cross. The truth of the matter is we're continuing on, all of us in our walk. Some of us started a long time ago. Others of us just got on the road, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory that we're exhorted, amen, to get on the road to walk with the Lord. Would you tonight, just for a moment, make up your mind and ask yourself, am I walking on the road with Jesus? in this thing called life. Come on, y'all, let's walk with the Lord. On the road to the cross, Jesus borrowed a donkey, an animal of peace, to enter Jerusalem, the city of peace. On the road to the cross, the crowds laid down their coats and palm branches in the streets to honor their king. On the road to the cross, Jesus wept for the city he came to save, for many of them would not receive him. On the road to the cross, the disciples were given a new and final command to love each other just as Jesus had loved them. On the road to the cross, Jesus became like a servant and washed the feet of those who would later betray, deny, and abandon him. On the road to the cross, Jesus was taken into custody, falsely accused, wrongly sentenced, and unjustly condemned. On the road to the cross, Jesus would not only carry his own cross, but also carry the sin and shame of all humanity for all of history. The road to the cross for Jesus was the road to death. But for us, the road to the cross is the road to life. Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's only one true church. Amen. How many came to worship the Lord this evening? How many came to bless his name? How many came to thank him that set before us is death and life and the word says choose life. And I wonder if there's anybody in the house that said, I've already chosen life, amen. A life that is grounded in the word and the work of the true and living God. A life that is grounded in the witness that Jesus is Lord. A work, a, work, a life that is grounded in gratitude for what he did at Calvary. I pray right now, beloved, that you would come on and bless the Lord with me. That you would come on and open your mouth. To bless the Lord means to say well of him. Anybody have anything good to say about the Lord tonight? Because if you don't, I can give you a whole laundry list of things that you can say on my behalf. If God has done anything for you, uh, won't you just open your mouth and say, God, I thank you. Uh, shout hallelujah. Somebody might have a glory. It could have been another way. And last year when we gathered, uh, there were some others who were walking with the Lord uh, and have since finished their journey. Uh, I'm just grateful that I'm still journeying right here in this barren land on my way to a land called glory. Would you bow your head with us for a moment of prayer? Oh Lord, our Lord, how very excellent is your name in all of the earth. 
God, if we searched all over, we wouldn't be able to find anyone like you. No one, oh God, who would give the very best. In fact, who would give their only, oh God, that we might have a right to everlasting life. We've come tonight, oh God, to thank you for the opportunity to walk and talk with Jesus. We want to say thank you for the gift that keeps on giving. We want to say thank you that the blood still works. We want to say thank you, oh God, that whether we're walking on a high mountain moment or, or traveling in our low valleys, uh, that he's right there with us. God, tonight we've come to give you uh, what you deserve. That's all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Uh, we pray now, God, for a fresh wind of the Holy Ghost uh, to blow through this house, oh God, uh, to move across the virtual sanctuary, uh, that we might, oh God, declare, uh, did not our hearts burn tonight, uh, even as the man of God comes out our way. God, we want to say thank you in advance. Do whatever you want to do in this place. Lord, have your way. Thank you, oh God, for the journey. Thank you, oh God, for the one who walks ahead. Now, God, now, God, now, God, move however you see fit. We say thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Beloved, we've come to worship the true and living God. I love it. Three churches, but we serve the same God. Amen. The word of God teaches us one Lord, one faith, one baptism. He's the father of all of us. So I hope you'll turn to your neighbor, your sister, or your brother and say, hey, sis, hey, bro, amen. Don't matter what church you're coming from or where you're going back to, amen. We're all part of the same family. And as the family of God, we would invite you to join us for our hymn of praise this evening. It's a familiar hymn, amen, and I pray that we will sing it, amen, to the honor and glory of God at last. And did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die. I don't know about you, but it still mystifies me that he would forsake that sacred head for such a worm as me. At the cross, at the cross, now let us stand without further lining and blend our voices together to the honor and glory of God.
Let the church say amen. Beloved, you may be seated. Let the church say amen again. This time, beloved, let's prepare our hearts and minds for the word of God read tonight, taken from Mark chapter 11, and I believe we'll be looking at verses 11 through 21. The Reverend Ashley B. Hoover, the eminent pastor of Jerusalem, Mount Pleasant, I always want to follow that with AME Zion Church. <laughs> I just want to claim y'all, amen, <laughs> from the Jerusalem Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church. Our brother and our friend will lead us in our scripture reading tonight. Beginning verse 11, we hear these words. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in a distance a fig tree in a leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, It is not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den of robbers. And, then, and when the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Then Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. Dustin's reading of our scripture this evening. Beloved, let's prepare our hearts and minds for prayer tonight. Ask that you would be mindful, amen, of all of those persons in your family, your church family, your neighborhood and beyond, for whom you know we ought to be praying. Pray tonight that you would join me in asking the Lord to be gracious to our brothers and sisters in Baltimore tonight. Asking the Lord to be kind to those families who have question marks even right now. To our first responders who have been much of the night and all day and still trying. For those who made it over the bridge just in the nick of time. For those who found an angel in a state police officer who said, you can't cross now. For the captain of that ship who is shaken tonight. Would ask that you be mindful of our brothers and sisters we have family right here in Clinton and maybe in other churches who have family in Haiti tonight. And their hearts are heavy, their minds disrupted. Asking the Lord to be mindful of those of us who are traveling up the King's Highway. But the truth is tonight, we also recognize there's some trouble in our way. Praying that God would be mindful of those among us who would be here if they could. Some at home, some in skilled care facilities, hospitals, 
some down in the valley so low they can't hear anybody praying because life is real. Wherever you are and whatever posture you can do it in, let us pray. Lord, I hear of showers of blessings. Thou art scattering full and free. Oh God, thirsty souls, those drops are refreshing. God, not just me, but all of us are declaring, even me, Lord, even me. God, tonight let some drops now fall on me, and not just me, God, but all of those who have assembled here, oh God, those in the virtual sanctuary, those joining us from their cars as they press their way, those in hospitals and nursing homes, those, oh God, who just are asking, is there a word from the Lord on this Holy Tuesday? God, we pray right now that you would visit with us God, that you in your omnipotence might show up and show out. God, that you might show up in the situations and the circumstances. Show up, oh God, in the ups and in the downs. Show up, oh God, in the questions. Show up right now in our sickness and in our grief. Show up, oh God, tonight in our not knowing which way to turn. Show up tonight, oh God, in our abundance and in our lack. Show up tonight, oh God, even right now all over the sanctuary your people oh god are lifting prayers to you god we thank you that you invited us to come into your throne room and god you promised that when we came there we would find help and mercy and tonight oh god some of us are saying mercy suits my case and others of us are just shouting lord help oh god right now hear us god as we call on you We've come tonight, oh God, for no other reason than to bless your name. We've come, oh God, as travelers through this barren land, acknowledging, oh God, that we are on our way and marching up to Zion, that beautiful, beautiful city of God. But God, before we can get there, we've got to deal with some stuff. And we need you, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus. Let your power fall. Send an anointing, oh God. Bless these churches that are represented here. Bless every ministry and every minister, lay and ordained. Bless those, oh God, with eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart, oh God, that's trying to discern. But God, tonight we're praying also that as we gather all week long, something might be said or done that some man some woman some boy or girl might come running asking what must i do just to be saved god we thank you for sending salvation our way thank you oh god for the king of kings and for the lord of lords thank you oh god that he would dare to journey oh god through time and space that he might disrobe eternity oh god to take on the form of a man thank you oh god for his walk would you help us to learn how to follow in his footsteps would you teach us oh god how to walk circumspectly teach us oh god how to redeem the time because we know god is coming short Help us right now, oh God, as we pray for the sick and the afflicted. Oh God, as we lift up those who are out of their minds and don't even know that they need a Savior. God, as we lift up those who don't know what's going on now and aren't sure about their necks. As we pray for those, oh God, who think that they don't need you or the church. God, tonight we ask you to move. While you're moving, oh God, visit with each and every person that dares to pray. While you're moving, oh God, would you allow your Holy Ghost to hover and then fall fresh on the man of God who will stand behind the sacred desk tonight to declare what thus saith the Lord. Would you, oh God, use him in an unusual way tonight? Would you, oh God, break him open? Oh God, dip him down deep in your well of wisdom. Bring him up preaching with power and conviction. But God, don't just move on him. Move in us. Shake us, O oh God, tonight. Turn us, O oh God, right side up. Help us to be the ones, O oh God, who leave this place. And then, God, help us to make a difference in the world. 
Father, we thank you for the journey. We thank you, oh God, that we're not doing it alone. We thank you for reminding us of his promise that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Now, God, help us to walk worthy of our calling. Help us, oh God, to hold to your unchanging hand. Help us, oh God, to celebrate you, oh God, in good times. And God, in the times when we are weary. God, we pray tonight that you would do whatever you want. And God, that you would cause us all week long to meet you in new and fresh ways. It's in the wonderful name of your son, Jesus, our Savior. Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Come on, y'all. It's all right to praise the Lord. I've come to bless him, to thank him for the journey. Amen. For allowing me to journey with him. Amen and amen. Everybody, praise the Lord. anybody got praise any the praise Lord. in them praise tonight? The praise the Lord. <laughs> We're just going to tell you a little bit about how great God is. If you know it, feels free to sing along with us, all right? Come on, 
Lord, come on and sing with me. How great is our God, and all is He. How great, how great is our God. And sing, my soul, my Savior, God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, and sing Thy soul, my Savior God, to Thee, how great Thou art, how great how great is our God. Come on, come on, sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great is our God. We all will see how great, how great is our God. Now, talk about the names. Your name above all names. Worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing, how great is our God. Would you sing that one more time? Oh, name above all names. Worthy, worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing, how great is our God. Everybody knows that now. Now, won't you sing along with us? How great is our God. We all will see how great, how great is our God. Let's do that one more time, everybody. Oh, how great is our God. Come on, sing with me. How great is our God. Lord, we'll see how great, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Y'all ought to give God a hand clap of praise. Give Amen. God a hand clap of praise. Now, if you serve a great God, why don't you take a moment to give him a great praise? Amen. If you serve a great God. Now, I tell y'all all the time, amen, that if we were fans of the commanders or depending on who you have in the NCAA pool for the men, go UConn. I can't even talk about what's going on with the sisters, because they are playing some basketball. Amen. Win, lose, or draw. Amen. Those are some bad sisters. Amen. But the truth is, if we were in some arena somewhere, and we were cheering for our favorite team, we would be shouting ourselves into laryngitis. Celebrating folk who don't even know our name wouldn't give a drop of blood just to save us. And then there comes a time to celebrate the one who was before was was, uh, the one who is right now, and the one who shall be when all of our shall be's are done and gone. 
He is worthy of glory and worthy of honor and worthy of praise. And I don't know about you, but I'm learning. I don't know when it's going to be my last time to do it. So while I'm able to do it, amen, I will declare I am not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power unto salvation. I know what the Lord has done for me. Amen. I know that I know that I know that I know that he paid it all just for me. That's why, amen. Somebody say, don't take all that. Maybe not for you, baby. But I have some skeletons in my closet and I still have a few live bodies so I can worship, amen, however I need to. Huh. All the saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. Never met a sin in your life. God bless you. But for the rest of us sinners saved by grace, can I get an amen? <laughs> we are honored tonight, amen, not to introduce the preacher, though for some in the virtual sanctuary it is an introduction because it's the first opportunity that you have to hear our brother and our friend. Most of us are at home. We are either, amen, members of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church, or we are bootleg members of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. The truth is these three churches have been hanging around so long, amen, that we all just claim membership on each role in the name of Jesus, amen. I belong to Jerusalem, Mount Pleasant, whether they want me or not. I belong to Mount Calvary, whether they want me or not. And God help this house, I belong to Clinton, whether they want me or not. Amen. We belong together. Amen. We are so excited that we get to hear the voice of God's spokesperson for the hour, the Reverend Dr. Brian O. Bellamy. If you have never heard him preach, he is some kind of preacher. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Y'all pray and he'll preach. And if you don't pray, guess what? Clinton understands hymn number one is not in the Baptist hymn. It's not in United Methodist Church. It's not in the Songs of Zion. They know hymn number one is what? Jimmy Crack Corn. And we don't care. We're going to preach anyway. Amen. Anyway, we will preach ourselves happy in the name of Jesus. We have that in common. He is the amazing son of Mrs. Dorothy Smith Bellamy and the late Mr. Albert Bellamy. He is, oh Lord, I'm about to start some stuff. He's a magna cum laude graduate of Morehouse College. Amen. He is a graduate of Yale Divinity School. He is also a graduate of the University of Exeter in the United Kingdom in conjunction with Hartford Seminary, where he earned his PhD. I want you to know this about Dr. Bellamy, his bio. I would say if you want to read all the details, Google him. <laughs> Google him. Amen. But I want you to know this about him. He is a man after God's own heart. He is a man, amen, of his word. He is a man who has both an educated head and a consecrated heart. How many of you know that you can be educated and still be a fool? Amen. Anybody know that? He is nobody's fool. Amen. He brings so many gifts and talents. He came to the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. He came to Lincoln Park. He came to us, his bootleg members in the middle of the pandemic. Amen. And yet he heard the Lord call him, and he answered the call. He is blessed to be married to the former Ashley Nicole Myrick. She's a graduate. Go ahead, y'all. Y'all already know of Morgan State University. Go ahead, Clinton. Lord have mercy. You would think that, you know, that was where the manger is over there at Morgan State. <laughs> to hear some of my members <laughs> tell it, that's where Jesus was born. You can't convince them that that's not where he was born. We are grateful. We are so grateful. Not only is he married and faithfully married to a beautiful, amazing woman 
who also happens to be an MD, but he is the father of three amazing children. Uh, I know that Amen Corner is in the house. Amen. So we see them back there. And the youngest, who I still cannot get over this, he just came. How is this possible? The youngest, Luke, and Sister Ruby, Grace, and Desi Lee. It's more than that, though. He has won the heart, amen, of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. But he's also captured the heart of pastors like me and Reverend Hoover, who gets his share with he and the team at Mount Calvary. After the next selection, the next voice you're going to hear will be that of the Reverend Dr. Brian Bellamy. I'm asking you, don't even wait. Start praying for him right now. Pray that God would just snatch him out of himself and then use him in an unusual way to God's honor and to God's glory, but also for our good. Come on, praise team. Y'all come on, lift as the Holy Spirit has led. Dr. Bellamy, you have it. Thank you, sir, for this gift. Amen. We get to sing about the one that makes a way through whatever we challenge, whatever we are challenged by. Sister Gwen is going to lead us here. Light in the darkness, 
my God, that is who you are. You're a playmaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Jesus, Jesus. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Is he your waymaker today? Waymaker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Has my God, He's that made a way for you. is who you yes, are. He has. That is who you are. He made a way for that me. That is who He's you are. He's always the way. He is a that healer. That is who you are. He's my strength. He's that my peace. Is who He's you my are. joy. He's my love. That he is, is my who heart. You my spirit, that my Savior, is who you the light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Amen. 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 Waymaker, miracle worker. Promise keeper, light in the darkness. Is that who he is? I won't dare speak for you, but is that who he is to you today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly we rise giving honor to God, who is the head of our life and the author and finisher of our faith. And I am so grateful to him tonight uh, for you, and for my here being, I, I hung out at Mount Calvary long enough in this round robin. I finally get the privilege to stand behind the sacred desk. I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be different tonight. Amen. The preacher done prayed it up. I'm going to be different to stand behind the sacred desk of the Clinton African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Amen. Amen. What an honor and a privilege. Anytime we stand to represent Jesus, it's a tremendous honor and a privilege that we will never deserve. And so I'm grateful for God's mercy tonight. I thank God for the angel of this house who is a praying and preaching dynamo. None other than Pastor Alice Walker Johnson. Amen. I also ask that you would help me to celebrate my brother, the poetic, prophetic pros prognosticator of the Jerusalem Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church, Pastor Ashley Hoover. Amen. And I thank God for all of you, <laughs> for, for my bootleg members, and, my, and look, my bootleg memberships here and here. Amen. <laughs> That covers everybody. I do want to acknowledge my children. My children are very young, and very often I have to bring them with me in the evening, or sometimes I have to uh, kind of put them aside while I'm doing virtual meetings, but they, they never complain. They are wonderful children, and so I want to acknowledge Desi. Desi, will you raise your hand? Is she hiding? I promise you she's not shy. Mount Calvary knows she's not shy. Ruby Grace, is she asleep? Maybe I bragged on them too soon, all right. Luke, will you raise your hands? All right, there's Luke, amen. They are six, four, and two. And Tuesday is my wife's uh, on-call day. And so if she had a loss, she's an OBGYN. Uh, uh, un unlike the young lady on Garden with the Wind, she does know something about birthing babies. And so she said if she had a lull, she would try to make it, but we certainly understand. But we praise God there is a word tonight from the Lord. I want to invite you to turn with me to the Gospel of Matthew, 
chapter 21, and we want to consider verses 34 through 40 in your hearing. We praise God also for this anointed praise team that led us right into the throne room tonight, singing out of the sincerity of their hearts. And we thank God for the warm welcome of the ushers as well. Amen. Matthew 21, uh, beginning at verse 34, when you have it, say amen. And I'll be reading, utilizing the King James Version, which reads as follows. <clears throat> But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Thus far the reading of the scripture. For just a few moments tonight, I want to share with you from the subject, the vertical, and the horizontal, the vertical, say that with me, and the horizontal, say the vertical, the vertical. And, the horizontal. and the horizontal, amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, as we gather this evening to reflect on Holy Week, and in particular Holy Tuesday, we must acknowledge that the Tuesday before the resurrection for Jesus was a very busy day. The Gospels reveal that on Holy Tuesday, that in addition to causing the fig tree to wither, Jesus, knowing that his time was drawing nigh, spent a considerable amount of time teaching his disciples. He gave the parable of the two sons, the parable of the vine dressers, the parable of the wedding feast, the parable of the ten virgins, the parable of the talents and the parable of the sheeps and goats. This is all on Tuesday. Intermittently, Jesus also had a back and forth with the religious rulers of Jerusalem who no doubt heard about him and were insecure concerning his popularity. How many know that there's somebody that doesn't like it when you're popular? Amen. They felt threatened that he would usurp their power over the people, the power they exerted in the controlling ways in which they taught the laws of Moses. And for the greater part of Matthew chapter 22, uh, the religious rulers of Jerusalem go back and forth with Jesus trying to trip him up, trying to, make, uh, uh, trying to get Jesus to make a heretical statement that they can use to shut down his ministry and to shut him down. This begins in Matthew 22, verses 15 through 22. The Pharisees are up first at bat, trying to trip up Jesus. They ask him a question about taxes. More specifically, verse 15 of the New King James Version says, then the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle Jesus in his talk. So the Bible says that the Pharisees sent some of their own disciples as well as the Herodians. The Herodians were a political party believed to be supporters of Herod Antipas. This is King Herod who was appointed to rule by Caesar Augustus. And together this group approached Jesus saying, teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God and truth. Nor do you care about anyone, nor do you regard, nor do you not regard the person of men. Tell us therefore, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? The Pharisees sent their own disciples along with supporters of the man supported or appointed by Caesar to ask Jesus, was it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? This was a quick and easy way to shut Jesus down had he answered the question wrong. But the Bible says that Jesus, perceiving the wickedness in their hearts, said to them, Why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the tax money. 
whose image and inscription is this? And they said, Caesar's. And he said to them, well, render therefore to Caesar's what is Caesar's and the things that are God's to God. As always, Jesus has the right answer to the questions of men. But that was not the end of the back and forth. After the Pharisees failed, the Sadducees were up next at bat. They also had a gotcha question for Jesus. Starting in verse 24, they say, Teacher, Moses said that if a man dies and has no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up an offspring or legacy for his brother. Now there were a man with seven brothers, and the first died after he married, having no offspring, and left his wife to his brother. Likewise, the second and the third and even to the seventh. Last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife of the seven will she be? For they all had her. Now, the craziest part of this question is that the Sadducees were sad, you see, because they did not believe in the resurrection. They are not asking this question to learn about the matters of life eternal. They are hoping that Jesus will say something against the law of Moses so that they can bring him up on a charge. Are you with me? But Jesus answered their question saying, you are mistaken not knowing the scriptures. You know, you, you can never go wrong when you go to the scriptures for the answer, right? Nor, nor, nor the power of God, for in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels of God in heaven. But concerning the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was spoken to you by God, saying, I'm the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob? God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. Clearly, that question failed. The Pharisees failed. The Sadducees failed. Now the scribes are up at bat. And this is where we have taken our text and where we will ride out the rest of this sermonic teaching. The Bible says that, that next a lawyer came forward asking Jesus a question saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? What is the greatest commandment? Now, brothers and sisters, this was a challenging question because in addition to the Ten Commandments, there are over 600 laws in the Levitical Code alongside the teachings and pronouncements of the prophets, which are also authoritative in this tradition. But Jesus responded to this lawyer in verse 37 of the text saying, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jerusalem, Mount Pleasant, Clinton, AME, Zion, Mount Calvary, Baptist Church, Lincoln Park, Rockville, Moco. I want to point out to you, beloved, that this scribe, this lawyer asked Jesus to identify the greatest commandment. In particular, he asked Jesus to identify a single commandment. But Jesus does not identify a single commandment. Jesus identifies two commandments. He does at first say, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he says in verse 38, this is the first and great commandment. But he does not stop there. Wow. He has satisfactorily answered the question according to what was asked, but Jesus cannot stop there. He cannot stop with simply the command to love God, but he has to pull in the commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus was asked for one commandment, but Jesus cannot give the first commandment without the second because they go together hand in hand. They must work together. We must love God and our neighbor. We must honor God and respect our neighbor. We must worship God and be kind to our neighbor. We must give to the Lord's work, and we must support our neighbor's thriving. You cannot lean into one without the other. They are mutually inclusive. And on this Holy Thursday 2024, on this first night of Holy Week, I'm so glad to get my little sermon out the way. My assignment is to remind you that we cannot love God 
without loving one another. Jesus says that with all of the specificity and religiosity of the law of Moses and of all the areas of mundanity in the law of Moses, the main idea of all of it is we must love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, and we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Very simple and straightforward question to ask of the text before we close tonight, and that is this. Why do these two commandments go together? Why must we love God and our neighbor? And to answer this question, I want to ask and consider three other questions. Can we do that tonight? First question is this, what would happen if we only loved God? What would happen if we tried to only love God and not love our neighbor? Let's seriously think of, of this scenario because it is very possible. It is very possible that we could put all our focus and adoration on loving God only. We could come to worship every Sunday and go through the motions of our Sunday morning rituals and we can pray and read the scripture and sing our hymns and share in the preached word. We can pray regularly. We can go on to Facebook and Twitter and share posts from the Bible in our sermon notes. We can buy bumper stickers that, for our cars that say honk if you love Jesus. We can walk around with family-sized Bibles and wear giant crosses around our neck. And when people say hello, good morning, we can say praise the Lord, I'm blessed and highly favored. We could do all of that and say all of that and think all of the things and feel all of the things that make us outwardly and upwardly religious. But without love for others, our religion is reckless and our witness is irrelevant. And unfortunately, beloved, there are examples of those who claim to follow Christ, Pastor Walker Johnson, who attempt to love God without loving God's people uh, 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 all around us, Pastor Hoover. Uh, and unfortunately, in the African-American community, we have seen disastrous examples of this, going back to slavery when those who would dare hold our ancestors in bondage would proclaim and profess to believe in Christ and uh, loving God without loving God's people. You can't love God while holding God's people in chattel slavery. We saw it again throughout the Jim Crow era where men would teach Sunday school and serve communion as deacons and some would even don clergy robes to declare the gospel in the morning and put on a Ku Klux Klan uniform in the evening and terrorize black churches and families and communities. One cannot love God while terrorizing God's people. And even in this election cycle, it strikes me as odd how there are those who claim to be religious and claim to represent Jesus and who will pray the prayer, God bless America, who then want to cut programs to help the poor. They love God but want to cut funding for food and, and housing insecurity. They love God but are silent on matters of justice. They love God but are okay with our veterans coming back to the U.S. to make their home on a park bench. They love God but fight legislation to forgive student loan debt for public school teachers and nurses. They love God and take a pro-life stance for abortion, which is fine. But why aren't you pro-life when it comes to feeding programs and health care and funding schools for that baby after she is born? You cannot make a religion out of loving God without loving God's people. It will be mutilated of grace and witness and devoid of God's power. Second question, what would happen if we had a system where we did not love God, but we tried to love people. What would happen if we had a system where, where we do not worship God, we do not honor God, where we do not even acknowledge God, but we go around doing good deeds and acts of kindness for people. And we attempt to show love for people and use our resources to help improve their lives. And, and, and we have examples of this also for the most part this is the position of secular humanists. 
who advocate for human rights and free speech and progressive policies and democracy. Secular humanists believe that morals and the proclivity to do right uh, uh, can exist without religion so that in the absence of God, human beings have it within them to know and to do what is right. But there are problems with trying to love people without loving God. First of all, without loving and acknowledging God, we cannot see the grace that is in and on the lives of our brothers and sisters. You see, in the absence of God, we are not divinely purposed, ordained, created beings. Our existence without God is reduced to an accident within the cosmos. And if I view you as an accident and you view me as a dis an accident, we will dismiss the divine value within us that God created us and knew us from the foundation of the world and the dignity that demands for how we regard one another. Y'all still with me? Another problem with divorcing and acknowledgement of God from, from our system and focusing purely on people is that we will see the world as material and mechanical where there are so many questions about life and reality and the universe that we cannot answer. Who created the world? And who created us? And how did we get here? And what is our purpose? And if there is a beginning, there must be an ending. When will the world end? And what will be the consequence? Existence becomes anarchy. And how will all these unanswerable questions impact how I live my life and how I treat my neighbor? I could go on and on with the problems of trying to love people without an acknowledgement of God, but the ultimate problem is this. Without loving and acknowledging God, who or what is the ultimate authority? In the absence of God, who or what is the ultimate authority undergirding the ideas of our morality, of right and wrong, and who or what is the ultimate judge, and who will mete out consequences for the mistreatment of our neighbor, and ultimately, how can we love people without the divine authority to know what love is? We are able to love because we know what love is from God. John 4, 7 through 9 says, Beloved, let us love one another, for, uh, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God, and he who does not love does not know God, for God is love. And so it's safe to surmise that a system where we love people, do not love uh, God or acknowledge God, will not work either. Can I ask one final question? One final question. Uh, uh, so then... We, we consider what would happen if we love God and didn't love people. And, and we consider what would happen if we love people and didn't love God. The last question I want to ask is this. What happens when we love God and we love people? What happens when we love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our minds as well as loving our neighbors as ourselves? That is what Jesus prescribed. That is the answer that Jesus gives to the lawyer, to the scribe in the text, uh, to the question, what is the greatest commandment? He, he could not give the commandment to love God without loving people. They go together. They are mutually inclusive. And so we must ask, what happens when we do as Jesus recommended? And love God with all our hearts and with all our mind uh, and with all our soul. And we love our neighbor as ourselves. Well... When we love God, we have a vertical focus. We have a vertical focus from bottom to the top. Our prayers transcend from us to God. Our worship transcends from us to God. Our stewardship uplifts the work of God. Our witness uplifts the name of God. Our attempts to live holy glorifies God. And when we love God, we have a vertical focus and from down here we lift our hearts and we lift our hands and we lift our voices to give him praise does anybody have a five second praise right now can we lift our hearts and our hands and our voices to give him praise but uh when we love people we have a horizontal focus our love goes from our hearts to the hearts of our brothers and sisters our acts of service 
our blessing to others, our advocacy for the least of these is support to others, our charity improves the lives of others, our sharing is a support to others, our showing up builds the confidence of others. And when we love people, we have a horizontal focus. But what would happen? I thought I was in a church. I said, but what would happen if we messed around and put the vertical and the horizontal together? When we put our love for God and our love for people together, when we put our work for God and our service for people together, when we put our witness for God and our advocacy for people together, when we put the horizontal and the vertical together, you know what would happen? We would end up looking just like Jesus. I'm talking about the horizontal and the vertical. I'm closing here, but I just want to share this story. We've recently moved uh, to Germantown. We, 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 we purchased a house, so we're official in Montgomery County. But before that, we spent a few years in Gaithersburg. And when one evening we were on our way home from a long trip, and my daughter at the time must have been about four years old, and she said, Daddy, I know that we're almost home. And I said, daughter, how do you know we're almost home? And she said, daddy, take a guess. And so I looked over at the gas station. And I said, well, I see the gas station. Did you see the gas station? Is that how you know we're almost home? She said, no, daddy, that's the wrong answer. Ah, then I looked over and I saw the schoolhouse. I said, Desi, uh, uh, do you think we're home because we see the schoolhouse? She said, no, Daddy, that's the wrong answer. I said, well, look, Desi, Daddy's tired. Can you tell me what is the right answer? And she said, Daddy, I know we're almost home because I see the church. And I said, Desi, how do you know that that building is a church? And she said, well, Daddy, I, I know it's a church. I said, but Desi, you can't read. How do you know that it's a church? And she said, well, Daddy, I can't read. But when I look at the top and I see the cross, I know I got the right answer. And I want to ask a question tonight. Is there anybody here that can say I messed up a time or two in my life? Is there anybody here that can say I've gotten it wrong a time or two in my life? But if there's one thing I got right, when I found the cross, I got it right. Is there anybody here that can say, when I found Jesus, I got it right. I'm closing here. But is there anybody here that's glad that you have Jesus? If you're glad that you have Jesus, why don't you give God some praise? I'm closing here. But when I was growing up, the senior choir used to sing, is there anybody here that loves my Jesus? I wonder if there's anybody here that loves my Jesus. If you love him, why not serve him? If you love him, why don't you love your enemy? If you love him, why don't you love your neighbor? We have to love in the vertical. We have to love in the horizontal. If you love in the horizontal only, you have a club for violence. If you try to love in the horizontal only, uh, you will hit a plateau and never reach heaven. But if you put them together, we can receive power from on high as we give worship from below and with that power from on high and with that expression of love coming from below we can love our neighbor as ourself and we put when we put the two together we'll look like Jesus is there anybody here that wants to look like Jesus and how you love and how you serve and how you work for him hallelujah let us pray Heavenly Father we thank you on this Holy Tuesday for the lesson that you gave, even though you were defending yourself uh, against 
the plots and snares of the religious rulers. We thank you for the lesson that you gave in illuminating for us and making clear for us the great commandment, the greatest commandment, that we must love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all our mind, and we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Lord, we ask that you would help us to love Give us the strength to love, even as you loved us who are unworthy to be loved. Help us to love like you love. And let that love be put into action for your glory and for your honor and our service to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone who wants to love like Jesus, give God a great hand clap and shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to ask everyone to stand tonight before we turn this back over to Pastor Walker Johnson. We don't want to take it for granted that because three churches have come together that everyone here knows Jesus and the pardon of your sins. And so we want to extend an invitation if there's anyone here who desires to give your life to Christ, if there's anyone here who desires to be saved, don't wait uh, for Sunday. Don't wait for any other event. Don't wait for some special person to be here. The two most important people are here. That's you and our Father. The doors of the church are open for you. Will there be one tonight to come and give their life to Christ to experience the love of God that you might love God and through that love have the capacity to love others as he commanded us to love. Let's sing that one time through together. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love him. How I love Jesus. Oh, how I love him. Oh, how I That you love to hear? Is there a name that helps you to love yourself as your neighbor and to love your neighbor? Oh, it sounds like music in Churchy. Oh, how I love Jesus. Unto him tonight, make him to know. God, not only do I love you, but testify to your neighbor that you together might lift up, amen, your song before the Lord. Oh, how I love you. God, even as I love you, I choose to love my neighbor to the left, to the right, in front of me, behind me. The ones I know and the ones that I do not. Won't you take your seat? My God, did I tell you that if you would pray, he would preach? Did anybody pray? Did he preach? Would you celebrate, amen, what the Lord has done in this place? Amen. Come on, y'all, and let's thank the Lord for depositing richly in us on this first night. Amen. I feel like I can run on and see what the end is going to be. Amen. The vertical and the horizontal. And he said, if you put them together, you might look like Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. I'm going to say, Pastor, that explains some things. Your lesson tonight explains some things. Oh, that we might represent or represent the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody said, who you with? Who you repping? Oh, that we might rep Jesus. 
the world would be right, amen, if the church, if the body, if the people of God would just represent him in the horizontal and in the vertical together. Beloved, we thank God. We celebrate the word of God and the work of the Holy Ghost in this place. We pray that our pastor, amen, might be restored 50, 100 fold, even as he has labored, that the Lord might lavish on him rest tonight and restoration for the journey. We would, on behalf of these three churches, invite each and every one of you to join us on tomorrow night. Now, Pastor Moultrie, let me tell you, this was a curveball because I had in my head that we were going to be at Jerusalem tomorrow. And of course, that's what I was telling people. Reading is fundamental. Y'all help me, amen. So I had to reread. I was like, oh, that is what that says, amen. Tomorrow night at 7 p.m., we do earnestly and truly invite you to join us at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. If you can't be with us in person, we invite you to join us in the cyber sanctuary. There is a word from the Lord. And I'm going to ask tonight that even as you prepare for this night's rest, that you would remember to call the name of the Reverend Ashley B. Hoover, that you would ask the Lord to send a fresh anointing just to rest on him, that when we leave the Mount Calvary tomorrow night, paint might be peeling, the carpet might be coming up. Y'all can send him the bill, amen? Send it over to Jerusalem, but that we might sup together once again. And then we want to extend the invitation on Thursday night to join us at Mount Calvary. Amen. <laughs> Is that right? I'm so confused. Okay. Okay, I'm going to Mount Calvary tomorrow. Tim, you got all this right because I'll be over at Jerusalem. I'll be all confused. On Thursday, we're going to be at Jerusalem Mount Pleasant. Listen, I'm going to tell you where we're going to be on Friday because I know about that. Amen. <laughs> on Friday, would you make sure that in addition to being with us tonight and tomorrow night and Thursday night, that you would make sure that you have your face in the place at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church at 7 p.m. as we share together the seven last words of Jesus Christ at the cross. And you do not want to miss, amen, what the Lord is already doing, amen, to prepare for Friday. You are welcome. Invite a friend. Send the link to your family and your friends. Speaking of the link, for those of you in the virtual sanctuary, I already have text messages saying, can we have the link for tomorrow night? Absolutely. We will share that, amen, across the congregations and into our social media. You'll certainly be able to find us. You can always find us, though, on YouTube on Mount Calvary's page. If you're not sure where else to do it, you can always go there and worship with us. Amen. Come on, put your hands together one more time for the man of God. I pray that you were blessed tonight. We are so glad to have you on behalf of the officers, the leaders, the clergy, and the members of the Clinton AME Zion, Jerusalem Mount Pleasant United Methodist, and the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. That's one church, y'all. I said it all together. Amen. <laughs> on behalf of the three in one, we just want to say God bless you as you continue to journey with Jesus as we move closer and closer to Jerusalem, and then as we celebrate the sacrifice and the service of Jesus, getting us all ready for that great getting up morning. The last voice you will hear will be that of Pastor Bellamy, who will bring the benediction as the Holy Spirit leads him. God bless you. Amen. All hearts and minds are clear. Let us stand. I'm going to send you home to get a good night's rest so you'll Meet us, if not beat us, at the church tomorrow. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. We magnify your holy name. And Lord, we are so grateful uh, to have this walk that we walk with you. This week in particular, we remember the marvelous sacrifice of your son. 
And we ask, Father, that uh, uh, this week as he endured what he d endured to make us holy, we pray, Father, that we would walk in a way that would glorify your holy and righteous name. Not just this week, but every day that we live, help us to, be, to live for you and to be witnesses for you. And in so doing, Father, help us to lift up the horizontal and the vertical together. Uh, even as we love you and serve you, help us to love others and to serve others in your name, that you would be glorified and that more souls would be drawn to you. We thank you, Father, for how you meet every need and for how you keep us in your care. Now may the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name, let the church of the living God say amen, 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 and amen. Go in peace. God bless you.